you're that sparkly object that's on a shelf and you want somebody to buy it. But how do you get somebody to buy that sparkly object, okay? And we all have products, we all have things to sell, but not everybody is going to buy what we're selling. I'm just not interested in it, or I have one of those, or I used one of those, or I got burned by one of those, whatever the, whatever the excuse is. So that sparkly thing on the shelf is what you want somebody to purchase, okay? And you want, there's, you want, to be able to sell the benefits to your features. So I asked you what you wanted to do and what you wanted to do. So some of your features might be um, going back to school and the benefit. So you need to start thinking about the benefits. Well, how can you benefit somebody? Is it your education? Is it your smarts? Is it you know that you've been someplace where somebody else is? Are you talented in a particular area? So you want to be able to guide people in that area. So remember, what are the benefits to your features? When I used to sell for Xerox, one of the things that we had to do was to convince people, why do you want to buy the box? Some of the box range from $28,000 to $200,000. That's a lot of money to spend on something. So I could say it does double printing, it does stapling, it does color, you know, that type of thing. So I'm selling the benefits it's going to cut down the time of your, of your employees to do their jobs. So what is it that you're going to do for your clients? What benefits do you have to offer? Do you have a, um, an elevator pitch? Tell them who you are. Who, you know, who are you and what is it that you want to do? Yeah, tell me who you want. Tell me. <laughs> All right, so, so my name is Sue, and I'm a nail technician, mm -hmm. and um, I specialize in uh, dry e com manicures and pedicures. There you go. Awesome. And that wasn't even 30 seconds. Right. You want to get your elevator pitch down to about 30 seconds. So if you're in an elevator with somebody, make sure you've got your business card, or make sure that you've got a QR code or something of that. You know, that a lot of people my kids' age. Um, you know, just give me your phone, you know, and we'll bump it and I've got your contact information and I've got your, I'm like, okay, it doesn't always work. So, you know, maybe, you know, make sure that I've got some information and what you want to do is what's down to the next one is you want to start leveraging how well you speak to someone and how well you can communicate to someone. And is someone um, going to look at you because you're young? Oh, wow, well, maybe she's got some really, really good ideas. Maybe she's got, she was more recent in school. Or do I want somebody who's older who's been in the business longer? But I don't know that. You know, if you've just gone to school, um, I don't know that. And I'm, and I'm going to say age. If, if, I'm, if I'm your age, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, she's been in the business longer. I definitely want to go to her because she knows all the tricks of the trade. Mm -hmm. Whereas maybe you just started. Mm -hmm. So you, what you want to do is, is start leveraging people and things you know, leveraging your communication styles. Make sure that if, and we'll get into this later, if you know that you're an extrovert and you meet somebody who, let's say, I'm going to call you an introvert because I called you out on the spot. Like I said, I'm a bull in a china shop. I have to know how to handle you and be more gentle with you than I would with somebody else, okay? All right, so collaborate. So thanks to Leah, you're all in a room where you're collaborating. You're gonna use each other. Um, there's enough business to go around. So maybe, um, maybe Leah's not convenient for some people to, who live up in the LA area. Maybe you know somebody from the LA area and so um, you want to send somebody up there. Or maybe you happen to know that Leah has a specific talent, you know, skills, talents, and abilities, and so you must go to Leah. Or maybe somebody else who just wants to do nails and somebody who doesn't want to do nails. So you really need to figure out what one does well and what one doesn't do well. There's somebody back there. Okay. All right, and so at the same time that you're collaborating, you're also going to want to network. So, and I know you're going to be talking about the social media networking. And I only really got into that within the last couple of years because I really didn't want my face plastered all over, you know. And in my line of business, it was LinkedIn and dealing with a lot of people's social security numbers and dealing with a lot of privacy issues. Well, it doesn't mean that Facebook, Twitter, and, and LinkedIn, that nobody takes that information, but know how to utilize it, know how to utilize it well and take advantage of scenarios like this. Let people know that you're here. 
I'm like, wow, I really missed out on that event. Make them want to come to events like this. Make them feel like you really missed something. You should have come. And get them really to, be, to become more eager. Um, give a speech. Hello. So get out into the public. So you need to know how to go out and talk to people. And maybe um, talk to them about the health of when you, ma when you get manicures, or what's in it when you do massages, what, what happens when you do that. So get together and maybe create a health forum. And create a buzz. You've got unicorns all over the place. You've got balloons <laughs> and stars, and, and you know, Lee is really good about putting stuff out. And as often as you told me that you're putting stuff out, you know, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot. And you have to be willing to go out and put yourself out there and allow people to, you know, to respond to you and to speak to you. Think about coupons. And Groupon, you could do coupons. You can do coupons on your website. Um, on my website, uh, Blessed With Activity, I do coupons for Mother's Day, for Father's Day. I do for various different types of things. So, um, like my, I have bracelets over in the corner that Leah has been uh, nice enough to display in her um, establishment. Ask somebody who's of a different establishment to um, set out your business cards and set out your brochures and maybe get that person a gift for a referral. Maybe it's a free manicure, maybe it's a free um, massage or something, but make sure that there's a whip them. What's in it for me? Make sure that you take care of the person who um, is helping you. Absolutely. You have to figure out who your clientele is, who your audience is going to be, and the more that you understand yourself, the more that you'll be able to understand your clientele. Let your clients know what you expect of them and what they can expect from you. Okay? Let them know what your services are and let them know what you're willing to take from them. You know, I don't care whether it's cash, check, credit card, or what kind of attitude you're willing to deal with. Because some people might be a little bit fussy. You know, how many times are you willing to deal with fussiness or somebody who's not so happy? So now that you know a little bit more about yourselves, you can start really exercising and putting forth your mission to who you want to be and how you can run your business. One of the things um, that I teach is there's a gentleman, um, Stephen Covey, and he wrote the book Seven Habits for Highly Effective People. Anybody know that book? Yeah. Okay. In that, okay, no, good. In that book, he says companies have missions. So why don't you have a mission? So if you think about any company for whom you've worked or any company you might like, you might take a look at their vision, you might take a look at their, at their vision. So think about what your mission is going to be. A lot of people think that the grass is greener on the other side. Well, think about it. How about watering your grass? And if you water your grass, then maybe somebody will wonder, well, what, what are you using? What's the fertilizer that you're using on your grass? And how are you making it grow? So you're the one who's in charge of your schedule. You chose to come here on a Sunday at 2 and listen to people. You created your schedule. And make time in your schedule for you. Don't block it up with somebody else's name. This is a training for you. So this, these three hours, they belong to you.